If you're feeling creatively uninspired, it might be time to refresh your crafting space. And it doesn't matter what size crafting space you have, you can apply these seven tips to a small shelf, a little closet, or even an entire craft room. Hi, I'm Elise from the blog LePetitSaintCrochet.com and I have been in this position many times before where I felt creatively uninspired. I had lost my crojo, I didn't want to pick up my crochet hook, my knitting needles, or even all of my gorgeous yarn. And that can be really frustrating, but it's totally normal. And yes, it's a little unnerving at the same time because we worry, will I ever want to pick up my craft again? But I'm here to tell you that there are things that you can do. And one of my favorite ways to get out of a creative creative slump is to refresh my craft room. Now, I'm not talking about doing a full makeover, which I did in my current basement laundry room slash craft room, and I'll leave a link for that video in the description box below. But I'm talking about simple little steps that we can take to refresh our spaces and make them feel fun again and to grab your crafting supplies and get to work. When I looked up the word refresh in the dictionary, it said to give new strength or energy to, to reinvigorate, and I absolutely absolutely love that definition. I love the meaning of that and I really do feel like that our surroundings do contribute to our creativity. And it doesn't matter what size crafting space you have, whether it is teeny tiny or you have a large craft room, you can take all seven of these tips or you can take one or two and apply it to your situation and help you to feel excited about crafting again. The first thing that I like to do when I want to do a crafting space refresh is to purge. I don't know where all this junk comes from. Cue Taylor Swift's new song, Anti-Hero, Me, I, I'm the Problem. It's me. It's me. I know that I'm the problem. I think these skeins of yarn are multiplying when I leave the room because I don't know where all of this stuff comes from. And it really helps once a year or so for me to go through and look at everything that I have and actually go through and purge the things that I know I don't need anymore. Because there's a lot of things in this craft room that seem to come out of nowhere. And sometimes it ends up being a bit of a dumping ground for things that I don't know what to do with. It always makes me feel excited about crafting again when I can get into all the nooks and crannies. As I'm filming this, I'm looking around my craft room thinking, oh my goodness, we got a lot of work to do in here. And I like just going through each and every bin and drawer. But if that's something that's a little overwhelming to you, you could just start with one bin, one drawer, one storage tote full of yarn and just go through and make sure that what you have in your crafting space is something that you actually actually love. The next thing I like to do is to organize my crafting supplies, and I find that this is the best part. This is the part that is actually a lot of fun for me because I like arranging things and putting things all in order. I actually did a little bit of Googling to see what does the research show about creativity and organization, and I was surprised to learn that the findings are mixed. A study done in 2010 found that people who described their home environments as cluttered or messy tended to feel more anxious they felt more stressed, they felt more depressed, and that affected their creativity. And then there was a study in 2013 where researchers found that people who were brainstorming at a messy desk felt like they had more ideas than the people who were sitting at a very neat and tidy desk. I found those studies really interesting and a little bit confusing, but I know when I look back on my own experience, when my crafting space is neat, and organized. I feel so creatively inspired. I just get so many ideas and I want to grab all of that gorgeous yarn and my hooks and my needles. So for me, being organized actually really does help me to feel excited about crafting. Now, one of the best things that I ever did for my crafting space was to choose a color palette. I know that this isn't going to be a tip that everybody wants to do, but it definitely was something that helped me out along the way. I chose for my craft room for colors, white, pink, red, and yellow. I wanted this space to be really bright and cheerful because it is my basement laundry room and it has no natural light. So I wanted all of my surroundings to be bright and cheerful because if I had gone with darker colors, this would have felt like a little cave, which a little cave sounds really nice sometimes, but I really wanted that light and cheerful feeling in here. So even if you only have a very small crafting space, you could choose a color palette by using all of the same color 
color bins. You could even get them at the dollar store. White is a very popular color for little storage bins. Or you could even display that yarn that is in those colors. That could be so pretty. Now that doesn't mean that I don't use other colors in my craft room because I definitely do. But my foundational pieces like my storage units and I've got a comfy chair and my rug, they're all within that color palette. And if I'm choosing something for this room, like a three ringed notebook or some type of accessory, like my little magazine rack, I want it to be in that color palette because it just looks really pretty together. Now that doesn't mean that everything has to be matchy matchy. I have several white Ikea storage units in my craft room, but I also have this white chippy cabinet that I got at an antique mall. And I love the contrast between the modern Ikea look with the old antique cabinet and it's just so much fun. And I love things that are chippy and banged up and I love putting them right next to something really sleek and modern looking. And that's the beauty of having a color palette is that things don't have to be matching. You don't have to buy a matching set of all of these pieces. It can just be things that you find around your own home, but it can also be things that you find if you're shopping and you can incorporate all of that because you've got a color scheme. My next tip is when you're shopping. Now, I don't do a lot of shopping for my craft room, but I had a gift card from Christmas to my favorite antique mall, The Depot at Gibson Mill in my hometown of Concord, North Carolina. I'm here at my favorite antique mall to see if I can find something cute for the craft room. The Depot claims to be the largest antique mall in the Southern United States states and whether or not that's true it is massive although i really have a hard time finding my way around my town even though i've lived here for 25 years i can find my way around this 88,000 square foot antique mall like a pro i can find any stall i know where all of the little things are in this trip i found an adorable little doll dresser and i already had its big sister right here in this little corner and i found the little small shorter one and i knew it had to come home with me and it's so much fun to put little knitted and crocheted clothing for my toys in there I just think it's so much fun but I also found a basket now normally I buy my baskets at thrift shops and I love baskets because it's easy to carry around and they're also really pretty you can find really nice baskets at thrift stores for maybe a dollar or two they're really really inexpensive but I found this one at the depot and it was a little more expensive I think it was $25 but it's beautiful and it's large enough to hold a good sized project like this granny square blanket that I'm working on and I'm going to get a lot of use out of both of my purchases that day and it'll also really add to my craft rooms vibe in here I love that the little doll dresser is yellow which is part of my color palette and I love the neutral of the basket and it's gonna look great in here as well or when I keep it up in my living room when I'm working on my project when you're shopping for any of those storage things or decorative things for your crafting space I love keeping in mind my color palette but also what do I actually need and what could I actually use in here without just cluttering it up even more. My next tip is to rearrange your crafting space. I used to like to keep all of my yarn in the bins that go on my Ikea shelf and I thought that it looked really nice for them to be all stored away and it looked very neat and clean until I found out that if it's all hidden away I never see it and it leaves me feeling so uninspired. So now I like to keep my yarn out. I like to be able to see it. I love being able to see all of the bright colors and yes it looks busy and overwhelming but for me that is what I love. So if you are a very visually stimulated person and seeing all of that yarn everywhere makes you feel crazy maybe it's better to put it in a bin so that you don't have to visually see it. I love having it all out and I also love rearranging it from time to time because putting it in a different spot sometimes just makes me feel so excited and it gives it new life and I love of seeing it all out. Sometimes just moving yarn to a new shelf brings new life to it and it looks totally different in a new space, which always makes me feel excited and ready to craft. My next tip is something new that I'm doing in my craft room this year and that is to label things. Currently I don't have labels on anything and I really want to change that because I have notebooks of my patterns and sometimes I have to drag them out, open them up and see what's in there. And I really like these label 
little stickers that I found on Amazon. They're just the black stickers and it comes with a little white gel pen and I think it looks really nice, like a little chalkboard. And it's also really nice because I can see it really well. And I am putting those on some of my bins and on my notebooks and that way I know what's in them because some of them are just standard crafting supplies like scissors and paper cutters and things like, well, scissors and paper cutters are kind of the same thing, but you know, like the guillotine style paper cutters and hole punches and things like that. And I really don't want those displayed. And it will be nice because I have a pretty large Ikea storage unit and sometimes I have to look through them and pull them out to be able to see what's actually in each one of the bins. So labeling them will be really nice to do. The only thing about this label kit is that the stickers are not super, super adhesive. Because my bins are fabric, I am a little bit worried that they're not gonna stick very well. They're definitely going to stick on my notebooks very nicely, but on the fabric bins, I'm just gonna try and see how they last, but I do really like how they look. The seventh tip is to display your makes. Now, this is something that I've been doing even when I only had one little shelf in my bookcase in my living room, and that is displaying things that I've made. I love looking around my crafting space and seeing all of the things that I've made over the years. It really makes me feel excited and inspired to craft. I actually love having a lot of my Amigurumi toys out that I made in the very beginning because they aren't perfect, they're really wonky, but it makes me so happy to see them because it reminds me of how far I've come, but it also reminds me that I started crafting when I didn't believe in myself and when I didn't think that I would ever be able to crochet and knit the things that I'm able to now. And I know that that is such a wonderful reminder, but I want to encourage you to display those things even if they're not perfect because you went for it and you tried something new and that should be celebrated. I hope you enjoyed these seven tips for refreshing your crafting space when you're feeling a little uninspired. And I hope that you're now feeling really excited about your crocheting and knitting and crafting again. And as always, stay safe out there and happy stitching.